Hi, in this video I want to show you how to set up the DeepMind uh, Atari playing software on your own machine. So DeepMind has kindly made that software freely available on the web. You can get the code here. I'll put the link uh, in the description below. And I want to show you how to get this set up so it'll run on your own uh, Windows or Linux machine. Okay, so um, the installation is surprisingly easy, actually. Um, nothing to be afraid of here. It's really well explained um, uh, on this page. We'll come back to it at the end of this video. Um, before I do, I just want to give a bit more context and maybe talk a bit about how, um, how the machine works, what's going on, um, and how you can teach yourself how, it's, how it works. So if you're not really interested in how it works um, and some of the theory behind how it works, then you can skip to the end of the video to install the software. Uh, but otherwise, uh, just stick with me for a few minutes. Um, so here, here's an example again of, of the uh, machine playing Space Invaders in this example. And you may also be aware of um, the fact that uh, DeepMind has a, a program called AlphaGo, which um, beat the, the world champion Go player Lee Sedol in, um, in a, a match about six weeks ago, uh, four games to one. Uh, and this is a real breakthrough. Uh, it wasn't expected that that would happen uh, for another 10 years or so. Uh, so that's why it's really interesting to understand how this works. And um, the CEO at DeepMind um, gives some great talks on the topic. I'll provide links to them uh, below. The, the essence is, is captured in this picture here. So the idea is that you have an agent in some environment um, and the agent could be a robot or it could be some software and it receives uh, observations of the environment through um, its sensory apparatus. In the case of Atari games, this uh, data is um, essentially the uh, visual information provided by each of the frames in the game, um, which, which correspond to the inputs to the uh, system or to the agent. Now, the agent has a goal in the case of the um, Atari games. The goal is to get the maximum score or reward, as it's called uh, in the theory. And, you know, based on the input data, i.e. based on the frames uh, from the game emulator, it will take some action um, which will change the environment and lead to new observations. And so the question is, how can the agent maximize the goal? Uh, what's going on inside here? So let's talk a bit about that. Okay, to understand what's going on inside the agent. Um, it's, uh, you, you need to understand uh, what's called reinforcement learning. Um, and there are some fantastic trainings uh, available out there. Um, this one is, is very good. It's not, it doesn't take too much of your time. I, I can highly recommend this one. Um, I'll come back to this in a second. There's another uh, great course by David Silver who works at DeepMind and uh, he's got a full a full course on uh, reinforcement learning and i can also highly recommend uh, some of the other talks by um, demi hasabis i believe his name is pronounced he's the ceo of DeepMind, um, and this this one in particular uh, is good and from about 18 minutes he, he talks for a couple of minutes about showing how the uh, approach is very effective in, in the context of playing Atari games. So I high, highly recommend that one. Um, and then there's a, a, a training or a, a course at uh, Berkeley called Intro to AI, which has some, some very good lectures on uh, reinforcement learning. So definitely recommend that one too. Um, and just coming back to uh, this picture, 
Um, people often use this sort of grid world idea to explain uh, the ideas behind re reinforcement learning. So the idea here is that each box represents a state that the agent can be in. And in any given state, the agent can take actions. For example, here it might start in the bottom left and it could go uh, forward or to the right or to the left or potentially backwards. And there may be some stochastic element to the, to the actions uh, such that if he decides to move forward, he may only actually move forward 80% of the time. There may be a 10% or some percent, percent probability that it doesn't move forward. It may move uh, right or left, uh, for example. Um, and the idea is to figure out um, for any given state where the agent finds itself, what's the um, optimal um, action that it should take to uh, maximize uh, its reward. So in, in the case of this simple grid, um, it will want to end up in the, uh, in the state which gives it a plus one reward and it will want to avoid a state which gives it a minus one reward. So that's uh, very useful when it comes to understanding um, the principles of reinforcement learning. The question would be for the Atari games, what are the states um, and what are the actions? Okay, so for the states, uh, in the case of Atari games, um, you might think that each frame um, of the game represents a state. Um, but if you think about it, that uh, won't work uh, in the sense that if you just look at the um, position uh, of the, the ball in any given frame, you've no idea where it came from and which way it's moving. So the idea um, is to use a history of, 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 of or a sequence of frames um, as the actual state that's uh, fed in as an input into the agent. Uh, it's, you can kind of see it here in, in, in this uh, picture. Um, you, can, you can capture the, uh, the trajectory um, through a sequence of frames. And that's then uh, that that combined sequence of of frames becomes your uh, state input. Um, so that's the answer to the question: what the states are in the Atari games, um, and the actions are basically what you know. What could a player do? You could move left or right. In the case of Breakout, very simple, or do nothing. Um, in the case of the Pong game here below, you could move up or down, or do nothing. Um, Space Invaders might be more complex where you have a choice to move left, right, do nothing, uh, press fire, or some combination of, of movement and firing. Um, so those are the uh, states on the one hand, which are inputs and, uh, and, and actions. Um, so going back to this picture, the arrows here represent uh, actions that you can take from a given state. So for example, in this state, the action would take me to this state and, and this uh, action would take me to this state with a certain probability. Um, and the mapping between states and actions is called a policy. So there may be uh, many uh, policies, many possible mappings between states and actions. This is one policy because it shows a specific uh, action for each given state. It might not give you the best um, reward. Uh, and the question is, how do you maximize the reward? How do you choose the right policy to maximize reward? And it's the, th the theory is uh, uh, linked to the fact that when you take an action, you end up in a new state with a certain probability. And the the value of that uh, action from, uh, from a, a given state is uh, a sum of two terms. It's the immediate reward you get for transitioning to the new state plus the value of being in the new state. So there's some iteration you can see happening here. Um, and to solve uh, for the so-called Q uh, value, which is uh, the, uh, the value uh, of each of the states, um, uh, and actions. 
the approach is uh, typically iterative. So that's uh, shown here where, you know, the, the, the value of a given state at the next iteration, k plus one, is based on rewards that you get for transitioning using, given a, a given action A into a new state S dash. So that's the immediate reward plus uh, the value of being in the, the uh, target state, the one you transition to. Um, and that may be discounted by some uh, so-called uh, discount factor here, gamma, which might be 0 0.9 or 0 0.99. Um, but given that uh, there may be some st stochastic element, um, if, you, if you pick a certain action A, then uh, you, you may not uh, end up taking exactly that uh, action. There will be um, other possible uh, target states you will end up in. And so this uh, T represents what's called a transition matrix. And so this is like um, calculating the expected value of the outcome of a certain action A given a certain st uh, starting state S. And the idea is to maximize the expected um, value across all possible actions. Okay, so the paper uh, explains that the iterative approach is often impractical uh, for various reasons and uh, instead most people um, end up using uh, a function approximator, typically linear, um, but uh, DeepMind use a nonlinear uh, function approximator, um, a neural network. Um, this shows the architecture of the um, convolutional neural net that they use. Uh, on the left hand side you can see that the inputs uh, are um, a filtered uh, sequence of frames. Um, they use, uh, here it's written, um, it, it turns out to be 84 by 84 rather than the original I believe um, uh, dimensions which were uh, higher than that. Um, and then the four represents the fact that there are four uh, frames in the sequence. Uh, so we talked about the fact that they, they use a sequence uh, to capture a state uh, rather than individual frames. So there's four in the, in the uh, sequence that they're using. So that's on the input side. And on the output side, they have um, an output per action. Uh, and the outputs are actually the so-called Q values of the, uh, of the various uh, actions. And they use uh, an approach called uh, stochastic gradient uh, descent to um, um, to update the the weights in this neural network, and then that's uh, essentially equivalent to the iterative uh, Q learning um, approach uh, that we we just talked about. So so that's what's going on inside um, the agent. Um, the paper is, is really, really good. I can highly recommend that you get it and read it. Um, the methods section is just uh, two pages and it really goes into all the, um, uh, all the uh, details and it even shows pseudo code for uh, the algorithm. And um, at the end of the paper, uh, it talks uh, a bit about the you know, approaches that they took to um, stabilize or to ensure stability and avoid uh, divergence with the, the network because um, with nonlinear function approximators um, uh, stability and uh, oscillations are often uh, uh, problematic. Okay, so that's the that's the, uh, the theory or as much as I've understood of the theory. Um, I have a lot to learn myself, uh, but I just wanted to share um, a few insights that I've gained. We'll go back now to the getting it running on your machine part of this uh, tutorial. Okay, so like I said at the start, it's really well uh, explained here on uh, on the GitHub page. Um, you need to install Linux. Uh, if you've just got a Windows machine, um, here's I'll, I'll give you a link to how to set up uh, get Ubuntu 
onto um, onto a USB drive, uh, which you can then use to install um, your Ubuntu on your Windows machine. I had Windows 10, so I used this one. There's probably lots of examples of how to get Linux running on your Windows machine. This is the uh, the page I used. I uh, just followed the instructions there. Get um, it's, it's it's very well explained. And the result is then you'll have uh, uh, Ubuntu. Um, I I actually installed fourteen oh four. And that's the first step. Then you have a choice. You can then uh, either uh, install CUDA from NVIDIA, uh, which will then speed up how your uh, network um, um, learns uh, or not. If you, if you, uh, so later you'll see that you can either run the, uh, the CPU or the GPU version uh, of the of the uh, software, and uh, so I installed C CUDA. Um, the instructions are the links to the to the software and to the instructions here. I'll just briefly look at that on the instructions. So so actually first on the download side, you end up on a page like this where you um, you select Linux, and then I had a sixty four bit machine, so I selected uh, x eighty six sixty four. I selected Ubuntu 14.04 and then the uh, the network deb um, and you'll find that it, it also gives you the, the uh, instructions you need to take uh, after you uh, you uh, you download um, so they're the same instructions that you'll see on the installation guide here so the installation guide is uh, is also very 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 well written um, you need to run through some pre-installation checks uh, you need to make sure that your graphics card uh, supports CUDA um, uh, and so on um, I'm just looking through this to see if there's anything that was particularly or in any way troublesome um, No, so you do the pre the pre installation uh, steps. Just go through them, um, and then I had to for for in installing the package. Yeah, these are the steps that that we saw a second ago over here as well. So we just need to run those. These guys here, and then you're done. Uh, and then I carried out some of the. Uh, the post installation actions there's the mandatory path setting actions so like literally just copy and paste here for 64 bit or 32 bit and then some recommended actions that they also um, carried out just to check that everything was set up properly uh, it tells you what to look for uh, so I, I, I did those two and then you've got CUDA uh, installed and it allows you to, to um, train your your network uh, using your GPU, which allows for uh, it allows you to speed it up. Um, so, after installing CUDA, uh, you just need to run, uh, and that, and then you download the um, the DQN software, download zip, and then unzip, unzip the software, um, and then you run uh, install dependencies, which which gets everything you need for you. So it's really simple. And then you just uh, run um, with the name of the uh, the game, which is in the ROMs uh, subdirectory. Um, so, for example, Breakout. And that's it. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Um, uh, I enjoyed playing with it. Um, I look forward to learning more. Um, I'd be interested to hear comments or ideas or suggestions in the um, in the comments below so i hope you liked it and uh, if i if i learn anything uh, more i'll share it with you here okay thanks bye